When preparing a North America picture plants for dormancy, it's a great opportunity to look for signs of pests that you may have missed during the growing season. In this video, I'll be discussing a pest found on North American picture plants called scale. You'll learn what it looks like and also how to treat it. My name is Jerry from Succulent Fly Traps. Scale are sap sucking pests which are found on leaves, branches, and fruits of ornamental and agricultural plants. They're called scale because of their shell like coating. They vary in size and appearance depending on the species. The life cycle of scale is very simple. Eggs are laid under the casing of a female. The eggs then hatch in spring. Nymphs emerge, which are called crawlers, because they then crawl around to establish themselves on other feeding sites. Once they've found another plant, they then insert their proboscis and they start sucking on sap. As they mature, they then form that shell casing, which we just saw in those previous photos. Once they establish themselves, they pretty much stay there for the rest of their lives. Scale can be pretty much found anywhere on pitches, including the non carnivorous leaves, the flat ones called Philodia. You can also find scale sometimes on the ends of the leaves as you pull them off the rhizome. The ends there will be quite wide and they'll be quite white. If there are, there are any scale there, they'll become quite visible because of that white background. So why is scale important? Well, it's important because if their numbers are left unchecked, then it may cause weakening of your plant. If too much sap is sucked out of the leaves, it may cause some of the leaves to wilt. It may even cause some discoloration as well. Scale also produces a residual material called honeydew. As it's feeding, the sap comes out as this sugary substance. That sugary substance called honeydew then may attract a fungus called sooty mold. Now, as the name implies, sooty mold is a black or sooty colored fungus. It then uh, feeds on that honeydew where the scale has been. Now, one or two leaves with this uh, sooty mold may cause discoloration and it may just look really unsightly. So it's a good idea to prevent uh, the outbreak of sooty mold. That's why uh, understanding how to control scale is important because if you know how to control it, then you're also gonna prevent any sooty mold uh, outbreaks as well. So how do you actually control scale? Well, one thing I love to do is remove all my leaves of my North American pitcher plants at the end of the growing season, just like I'm doing right here. That way, you're ensuring that any leaves that are infected by the scale have been removed from your plant. Once all those leaves have been removed, you're then giving your plant a nice, fresh, clean start to the growing season in spring. Now, once I've removed all the leaves, I then throw them out into a bin. That ensures that I'm not spreading any scale to any of my other plants. So as your North American pitcher plant sends up new shoots in spring, it gives you a unique opportunity to keep on top of things in terms of scale numbers. Now that you know what to look for, it's important to closely inspect each leaf as it's coming up in spring. Now, if you do find scale, the easiest way that I know to control them in the most organic way is to simply use my fingers. Just simply use my thumb and forefinger and squash the scale. Of course, uh, it's important to use gloves, not only for hygiene, but the fact that you don't spread to other plants. Now, allow your plant to grow. As the season progresses, if you start to see more and more scale on the leaves, then you may have to sort of take another approach. What I like to do is simply use uh, a paintbrush dipped in water, just using the end of the bristles, I move it along the pitcher or leaves. That way I remove any unseen scale that I may have missed earlier on. The fact that it's just water means it's completely organic and completely natural. What I like to do whenever I'm controlling pests is that I always start with the most organic way. And then if that doesn't work, I slightly go up more and I take a more drastic approach in controlling those pests. That way, you're ensuring that you're not adding any unnecessary pesticides or chemicals into your garden and most importantly into your plants.